Good morning, Europeans. Oh, hello. I see some people from my country. Dobar dan in Serbian. Yes, uh, hello from Dragomir. <laughs> thank you for Dobar coming, Dobar dan. Oh, Vladimir also. Vladimir is also here. My country. Hello, hi, Romiana. Hi. <laughs> Very well nice to see you all. So, um, <laughs> and of course, yoko -san. It's uh, so some of the people are still coming. Uh, Lawrence will will it's take so good care to of, see you. Um, oh, ah, yes, Antonella. Hi, so good to see you. It is always a pleasure to see people from um, United States, especially because they're getting up so early to listen. So thank you for coming. Oh, oh, from Russia. Russia. <laughs> Hello. Uh, nice to see you? you. Good to see you. I'm fine. To YouTube. Oh, Krzysztof is also here. Hello, Krzysztof. <laughs> um, oh, Sergei Kazarian is here. Hi, Sergei. Well, this is going to be a beautiful webinar. I'm really happy that we have uh, so many participants because today's webinar is really special and we are honored and it is a really great pleasure that today we have with us uh, Professor Emeritus. Um, uh, Dr. Hiro um, Ozaki, who, as we said in our announcement, is absolutely one of the world's um, top 2% scientists in the world nowadays. And uh, of course, he was always one of the world's foremost leaders in molecular spectroscopy. Um, I hope that you read he, uh, the announcement for the webinar very well, because uh, it uh, shows that Professor Ozaki is not only excellent as a scientist, but uh, really one of uh, uh, incredible personalities. And of course, for me, one of the most um, pleasurable people that I have met. Uh, a really, really beautiful uh, example of what a scientist should actually be. So uh, without, uh, you know, wasting time more, I would like now to give a word to Professor Ozaki. And please, Professor Ozaki, if you can share your presentation with us. We will have a lot of time for discussion afterwards. So please, if you have questions during the webinar, uh, you can type them in the chat box and we can address them later. And uh, when Professor Ozaki finishes with his talk, we can of course have um, a discussion in the real time. So Professor Ozaki, thank you very much for coming today. You can begin. Okay, so let's start. So, uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much for giving a good opportunity and uh, talking about our study on NIR imaging. And I'm very pleased I can uh, talk with many audience. Thank you very much. So my title today is just NIR imaging, okay? I'll talk about the... Uh, uh, wonderful uh, world of NIR imaging. Doesn't work. Mm, it's so strange. Oh. So uh, our group has been involved in uh, studies of uh, NIR imaging. Uh, NIR imaging studies may be divided into three. One is the development of novel NIR imaging systems. We work with a uh, couple of uh, uh, industry in companies in this uh, topic. We also develop NIR data analysis methods for building NIR imaging. The third point is uh, uh, development of new applications of NIR imaging. Hmm. Again, something is wrong. Ooh. What happens? Lawrence, can you help? 
Oh. No. Okay. Uh -huh. So this is the contents. Mm. This is contents. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> first part is concerned with the development of NIR data analysis methods uh, for developing NIR imaging. Okay. And second part consists of three topics. First, highly sensitive portable NIR imaging device, DNIR by Yokogawa Corporation, uh, application to tablets. The second um, uh, <clears throat> topic is high-speed NIR imaging of biomolecular distribu distribution and molecular mechanism of embryonic development in fat fertilized fish eggs. Uh, this system was uh, uh, developed by Sumitomo Electric Industries. The name of the uh, instrument is CompoVision. The last one is uh, uh, non-staining blood flowing imaging using optical interface due to Doppler shift and NIR imaging of uh, molecular distribution of uh, in uh, developing uh, uh, Medaka egg. This uh, system was proposed by Professor uh, Ishimaru of Kagawa University. Okay. Mm. Okay. So first, uh, let's start with uh, this uh, part. Okay. So development of NIR data analysis method for developing NIR imaging. Uh, in this uh, uh, research topic, Dr. Shinzawa, Hideki Shinzawa of AIST uh, played a very important role. He proposed three uh, methods. One is, first one is the two-dimensional band shift correlation spectroscopy for NIR imaging data of cellulose tablet. The second one is NIR imaging analysis of cellulose tablets by a band position shift. This idea originally came from the uh, uh, idea by uh, uh, Kazarian, Professor Kazarian, who proposed band shift method uh, for IR imaging. The last one is uh, self-modeling curve resolution analysis of NIR imaging data of pharmaceutical uh, tablets. Today, I'll talk about this. So this is the results of the uh, uh, use of SMCR for building NIR imaging. The sample was a mixture of uh, pento oxy uh, free, 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 uh, PTX and palmitic acid, the mixture of A and B. And this is the, uh, uh, these uh, concentration profiles uh, of A, PTX, and B, palmitic acids with time of grinding, grinding time, uh, zero, two minutes, and 45 minutes. Uh, time zero, okay? So in this case, PTX is just here, and uh, palmitic acid is located here, okay? And after two minutes, already a, a mixing uh, started, okay? Uh, PTX is here, and uh, palmitic acid is here. And after 45 minutes, two materials are uh, mixed uh, uh, completely. Okay. 
So as shown here, so NIR imaging combined with SMCR can be powerful tool to explore the chemical or physical mechanism induced by the uh, uh, manufacturing process of pharmaceutical pro, uh, products. So SMCR works very well for building NIR imaging. Yes, from now I'll show you uh, three uh, good example of the newly developed uh, NIR uh, imaging devices. The first one is a highly sensitive portable NIR imaging uh, device by Yokoga Corporation. This is the uh, system. Here is the uh, uh, B NIRS. This DNIRS is a compact, this size. Okay. This size portable NIR imaging instrument. Measurement speed is this, scan resolution is this. Measurement area, uh, 15 uh, millimeter uh, times 15 millimeter. And, uh, uh, and uh, we use four or rice sauce. Okay, and uh, here is a sample, and the uh, uh, light is corrected here, okay? Yes, this is the first example uh, uh, obtained by using, uh, using uh, the uh, in IRS, this is a dissolution this, this of water into a tablet studied by Ishikawa et al. Okay, so uh, this is uh, zero minutes, two hours, and four hours. So dissolution of water into a tablet. So changes in the peak height ratio based image of tablet dissolution uh, developed by using the uh, second derivative intensities at 1361 and 1354 nanometer due to ASA and WARA uh, respectively. These ratio images were modified by arbitrary threshold to there is the color except the tablet part. Okay, so uh, the solution or water into tablet. Okay, and this is also a nice uh, uh, result for pharmaceutical application. Yes, this is another example. Uh, these are uh, NIR images of non-defective tablets. This is non-defective tablets. And defective tablets of 25% and 50% magnesium steric, uh, stearate respectively. So you, uh, the images were uh, obtained by using a second derivative at 1213 nanometer. And the figure of 25% percent and 50 percent indicates the percentage of the defective area in each tablet. This is also very clear and nice results. The second example is uh, uh, concerned with high-speed NIR imaging of the biomolecular distribution and molecular mechanism of embryonic development in fat size uh, fish eggs. Uh, Mishika Ishigaki uh, uh, made a significant contribution for this study. So uh, now I explain about fertilized fish egg. 
fertilized egg is an origin of life. Investigations of embryonic development have been important in both basic biology and practical applications. So our aim is to develop a powerful non-destructive evaluation method based on state-of-the-art NIR imaging that enables us to probe the development and quality of embryos at the molecular level in situ. So uh, this is the uh, uh, Japanese medaka which we used for this experiment. Body length is just only four centimeter, and incubation um, date is uh, eleven to fourteen uh, days. Egg size is one point five uh, millimeter in a diameter. Okay, so. Egg. An IR measurement. Uh, uh, this is a just just before hatching. The next day, hatching happens. So uh, this shows the uh, uh, Mendaka fish egg not fertilized and uh, fertilized. Okay. Uh, after the fertilization, egg consists of three major parts: oil droplets, like this, and yolk, and blasto disc, uh, and bionic uh, body here. Okay, uh, this is the uh, uh, egg development. First, third, fifth, seventh, and just before hatching. Yes. So, okay, this is the optical images of uh, a Rice medaka eggs on the first day <coughs> and this day after fertilization. The first day you can see uh, uh, many small oil droplets and blasto uh, blasto disc is here. And but on the fifth day already you can see eyes and head and body and oil droplets. Uh, becomes just one with larger size. So oil droplets uh, has unsaturated fatty acids and lipoproteins. Uh, blasto disc and embryo has uh, 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 proteins and also uh, fatty acids. But I has sphingolipids and uh, glycerolipids and collagen, okay? And cell membrane, yeah, cell membrane has, uh, has uh, phospholipid bilayer and membrane proteins. So actually, uh, egg has various kinds of components. So uh, we use High speed and wide area monitoring NIR imaging system with a Nobel NIR camera composite vision. This system was uh, developed uh, by, uh, by Sumitomo Corporation. Uh, we uh, support Sun uh, for this development. So, characteristic features of the uh, camera include high speed and wide area monitoring thanks to a, no, a, a newly developed INGAS detector. The detector is equipped with INGAS uh, GAS SB type 2 uh, quantum wells. Lamy is native on uh, uh, indium phosphate subset. Thus one can 
measure an NIR spectrum in this region of uh, uh, this wide area uh, within two to five seconds, so very fast. And this uh, instrument also can be used as micro uh, monitoring uh, NIR imaging system. Yes. So uh, this was the microscope NIR imaging system with hyperspectral camera. There is NIR camera named CompoVision. This is object oh, range, yeah. and this is a sample. And this is a measurement stage. Uh, measurement conditions are following. We use the transmission mode with Length range here. Measurement time is only a few seconds. That means the Megaka A remains right. Jose. Like this. Okay. This is the A, A, and uh, here is a uh, A. A is sandwiched by. Uh, two spaces. We use grass right here. Okay. So uh, this is the uh, uh, NIR spectral data. Spectral data in this region measured by. Uh, 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 Sumitomo's system and your uh, blue, oil, red, embryo, uh, blue, uh, your uh, dark, uh, gray. Okay. So, uh, spectra of the embryo and yolk are very similar, very similar, but oil gives quite different spectra. From other, for example, here. Okay. Also, some differences here. These are due to, uh, this is, uh, uh, of course, these are due to the uh, uh, water band, water band. And this band is due to the, uh, uh, I think, the uh, uh, fatty acid oil. Okay. Okay. And uh, uh, This is the uh, enlarged spectra of uh, uh, this region and this region. Here, water band here, and we can see clear band here and here. And red color showed band due to oil. So uh, oil droplet gives quite different band here. Here and here. This is the first overtone of CH2 group. This is the second overtone of CH2 group. Okay. And uh, uh, here is a band due to uh, protein. Okay. Uh, this line is also the uh, protein amide uh, combination mode or um, combination mode here. We use this one here. This one here, and uh, one band here due to protein to develop uh, imaging, NIR image, these three bands, okay? The result is uh, next, yes. So this is a visible uh, images, uh, images of first, uh, and fifth, seventh, and just before hatching. Okay? You can clearly see changes in egg. All the droplet changes. And the fifth day, you can see uh, eyes and head and body. Okay? So uh, we use three bands here. This band and this band and this band. Okay, 
this this band is due to a first overtone of CH stretching band of fatty acid, uh, fatty acid, saturated fatty acid and hydrocarbons. This band is due to uh, first overtone of unsaturated fatty acids. And this band is due to uh, first overtone of NH stretching mode of proteins. Mm -hmm. Let us see this one first. Okay. Uh, saturated fatty acid. Okay, saturated. So saturated fatty uh, fatty acids distributed um, membrane uh, membrane and some in oil droplet and also uh, in in uh, body or uh, eyes and so on, and uh, pretty much in, uh, in York. Okay. Changes gradually, changes gradually. In the case of unsaturated fatty acid, you can clearly see, uh, uh, you know, uh, dense distribution in oil droplet. Yeah, 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 here, yeah, oil droplet. Very uh, dense distribution here. Also, the uh, thin, very thin uh, membrane envelope. Yeah, yeah. 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 But distribution of unsaturated fatty acids are rather uh, limited, but mainly in oil droplet. Proteins is very rich in, uh, in membrane, very rich in membrane. Okay. So uh, this is the uh, uh, imaging, and this is the, uh, again, this is the uh, image, optical image, and this is the uh, uh, fatty acid, okay? saturated fatty acid distribution, fatty acid distribution. Okay? Uh, you can see here so membrane structure membrane structure and also oil droplets some distribution in oil droplets and also embryoic structure body here body here body here and eye and body okay there's a wide distribution here okay, for uh, saturated fatty acid. But in the case of unsaturated fatty acids, uh, distribution is rather uh, limited in oil droplets, oil droplets and membrane structures okay membrane structures there yeah. membrane structures so it is well known that fish air contains poly and saturated fatty acids dha epa etc etc okay? and oil droplets include unsaturated fatty acids uh, thin structures, egg membranes are highlighted here. Very thin structure or uh, egg membrane highlighted. And phospholipid bilayer includes unsaturated fatty acids. Unsaturated fatty acids here and here. Okay. Okay. So this is the. Uh, uh, basic uh, study these six 
uh, NIR spectra in this region, uh, 7,500 to 4,000 wave number region of, uh, of uh, orate acid, uh, Mm, linoleic acid, uh, linoleic acid, stearic acid, arachidic acid, and paramedic acid. Three are saturated uh, uh, fatty acid, and top three are unsaturated uh, fatty acids. So uh, here is a, a big change between saturated and unsaturated fatty acids, okay? So uh, here, big change from 70, 28 nanometer to 70, 30 nanometer. So you can discriminate saturated fatty acid and unsaturated fatty acids by using uh, this one. So, uh, let us see this spectra. So, oil droplet rich in unsaturated fatty acids show intense peak here, 17, 16 here. Only this one shows uh, intense band here, but yolk and membrane uh, does not show this band here. Okay? And, but membrane shows bands here. So each part gives different, clearly different spectra in uh, first overtone of CH stretching mode of fatty acid region. Okay. Therefore, we can develop quite different NIR imaging for this and this. So, so this is the uh, protein case mm, the, uh, imaging. Uh, the images uh, developed by using this band, NH stretching amide group, okay? First overtone of NH stretching band. In this case, you can see uh, uh, distribution of proteins, okay? Distribution of proteins. So uh, in oil droplet, you can see depot protein is heterogeneous in oil droplet. And I, I here, I contains dense collagen, also the protein. Okay, and membrane proteins show membrane structure like this, membrane structure like this. Okay. I, I, and I, okay. So this is, okay. Now you can see, you can see, you can comparison of, uh, this is a just drawing picture from reference. Drawing picture, this is very nice one, very nice one, but you cannot see a uh, uh, distribution of oil or proteins and so on. And this is the optical imaging from Compovision. It is also very nice, but you cannot see a distribution of uh, proteins and uh, uh, refis, okay? But in the case of NIR imaging, you can clearly see distribution of uh, uh, fatty acids, okay? fatty acids, I mean uh, saturated fatty acids, and proteins. Uh, very clear difference. So conclusion of the second part, the present study demonstrates a high speed 
Only a few seconds in visible NIR imaging of the groups of fertilized fish eggs at some molecular level and structures of eyes. Lipid bilayer, membranes, micelles, and water structures differences are uh, visualized. Images of different species of fatty acids were obtained. Moreover, the structure of the membrane, uh, phospholipid bilayer, and distribution of unsaturated fatty acid in all droplets and egg, egg membranes could be studies. So next, the last uh, topic. So uh, the last topic is no straining, uh, straining uh, blood flow imaging using optical interface due to uh, Doppler shift and NIR imaging of molecular distribution in developing fish egg embryos. This study was also uh, mainly carried out in uh, Dr. Ishigaki and uh, mm. so uh, we carried out non-straining -strain, uh, blood flow imaging. Okay. So this is the uh, visible image of the uh, fifth day egg. Here is eye and here is heart. You can see heart here. Okay? And one can obtain not only in vivo image of molecular uh, distribution from developing uh, eggs, but also simultaneously images of blood flow in a non-destructive manner. Big signals are extracted using optical interface. Non-staining blood flow imaging using optical interface due to um, Doppler shift. So now I explain to you uh, Doppler shift. Okay. This illustrates the Doppler shift. Okay. The light with the frequency F0 is emitted to object moving at V, okay, moving at V. The frequency of the scattered light slightly deviates due to the uh, Doppler effect. Okay. And delta F is new cosine theta divided by lambda. Bit signal frequency uh, delta F is observed by supervision of the light with the frequency f and shifted frequency f plus delta f caused by uh, Doppler shift. This is the uh, image type to uh, dimensional Fourier uh, spectroscopy system, ITFS. <laughs> and developed by Professor uh, Ishimaru of Kaga University and Aoi Electronics Co Limited. Okay. And here is the light source, uh, light source, and uh, lens here. And this is the hyper imaging uh, unit, this one. Hyper imaging unit, and here is the Ingas camera. Okay, and uh, uh, we use in this case uh, reflectance method. Uh, wavelength resolution is this, and wavelength region measured is this. Okay, and here is a sample. Okay. So this is a mechanism of uh, ITFS system. Here is a sample and objective lens. And uh, 
this is a phase shifter. Partial movable MISA. Okay, this part is movable. This part is not movable. Okay. So you can get spatial phase shift here. Okay. Shift here. So movable mirror gives movable mirror gives phase difference to the right from the sample. And uh, right interface gives interferogram, interferogram. To the spectroscopy information obtained by Fourier transformation of the interferogram. So again, this is the uh, visible image, uh, fifth day uh, egg sample. And um, here is a heat and uh, a heart, 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 oh, sorry. This is a heart, okay, heart. Uh, this is no heart part, no heart part, okay. And the, uh, you get the, uh, you get the uh, uh, noise-like wave forms from the heart part, but uh, not from no heart part, okay? So uh, this is the uh, uh, interferogram, top one, and uh, uh, the second one is magnifies interferograms. You can see a heart beat here. One, two, three, four, five, 16 times within five seconds. Okay, 15 times within five seconds. That means 30, 3.2 hertz. 32 points hertz correspond to the uh, uh, 3.683 micrometer in a peak wavelengths. This is a free transformation. So uh, this is the uh, uh, fundamental, and this is the uh, uh, first orbital and second orbital, okay? Yeah, peak. Okay. By using these two peaks, we develop the uh, 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 we developed non-staining blood flow images, okay? We use the first overtone and second overtone, okay? This is a spectrum gained by FT or interferogram uh, obtained from the uh, hard part, okay? Mm. So, these three were obtained by using this speed. And these three were uh, obtained by using this speed. And light using light intensity, absorbance, and relative light intensity. Uh, more or less, you can get the uh, similar result showing part and also the uh, and very nice uh, in very nice blood flow image very beautiful result so uh, then we also use transmission mode uh, this is absorption spectra at heart part okay at heart part and the, uh, this is the, uh, uh, we obtain these four images by transmission mode using this frequency, this frequency, okay, this frequency, okay. This is the uh, heart beat, this is the uh, blood flow, this is the, uh, uh, OH stretching, uh, OH stretching, water band, water band here, 
and uh, this is the uh, uh, hydrocarbon hydrocarbon yolk. Okay, so uh, this is the uh, conclusion of the uh, last part. New avenue of NIR imaging, NIR spectra of egg suction people observed, and the information about the molecular composition of embryo or, uh, to be uh, acquired. Moreover, light reflected by a moving structure which is associated with heart beat and blood flow is also observed to show a slightly shifted frequency due to the Doppler shift. And the technique described here has a, a variety of applications in uh, biology and biomedical sciences such as uh, cardiogenesis and IPS cells into cardio or myos sites or may be able to catch the slight uh, beating between them through optical interface in the very early stages of cardiogenesis and differentiation of IPS cells. So at last, but not at least, uh, I just want to mention perspective of NIR uh, imaging. Uh, so uh, nowadays, when you are in future, in near future, imaging visualization technology is getting more and more important extremely important for various purposes. Uh, something, some, sorry, something wrong here. Uh, purposes, for example, uh, material sciences, nanoscience, pharmaceutical, or biomedical, agriculture, food and polymer, or safety, or security, or art, and also the uh, <clears throat> for almost everything, visualization is really strong, very strong, very strong technique. So we have to develop much more visualization technology. So for this purpose, we can use we can use UV visible. NIR, IR, terahertz, Rama, fluorescence, or other imaging techniques. Each technique has uh, strong points. Okay, so we can use various kinds of spectroscopy imaging techniques. Okay. All are very very promising. Also, you, we we have to develop three D imaging for that and more rapid imaging or faster imaging and uh, uh, portable imaging or handheld imaging uh, also very much expected and new analysis method machine learning or many more so uh, software is also very important So acknowledgement, so just chronicle, uh, chronicle uh, order. I would like to thank Hideyuki Shinzawa. He is now at AIS Kitsukuba and Kimie Awa, uh, Dai Nihon Sumitomo Pharmaceutical Company, and Kodai Murayama Yokogawa, and uh, Daitaro Ishikawa Tohoku University, and also Mika Ishigaki Shimane University and uh, Professor Ichiro Ishimaru uh, Ishi, uh, Kagawa uh, University. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Ozaki. <laughs>
this was really, as Professor Stenko has said, brilliant. Um, I'm really happy that we had a chance to, to hear your talk today. And um, I will very fast give a uh, word to other people. But I have to say that uh, regarding the, uh, the, the results that you presented today, I'm particularly impressed. And I know for, uh, from before, uh, all, the, all the research results that you obtained using um, this novel NIR camera composition. And I'm particularly impressed with all of the papers published from this um, embryo, embryo um, imaging. And we are currently working on a, on a book about aquaphotomics, and I plan actually to, to, um, in, to include these results coming, especially about the water, in one of the chapters, because it's really very significant uh, what was obtained for aquaphotomics. Unfortunately, th there are not many aquaphotomic studies which are done in combination with NIR imaging, and this is really our current weak point, and I'm glad that we saw today uh, how many uh, information can be obtained from just you know, one, one instrument. So this is something I had to tell. And now I would give uh, immediately word uh, to other people. So perhaps first, Professor Tenko, I would like to, to comment on, on this. Thank you very much, Elena. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Professor Ozaki. I, um, I, no words. I'm happy to see, um, because I know this research since the beginning, um, but I, um, I was looking at the um, uh, results related to um, each, uh, diff all different molecules, and especially, uh, I think what, what is uh, people want to know is what is the water structure in the cell wall, and you have this information. It it is so valuable, and um, the the perspective that you you showed about three dimensional image. Um, mm -hmm. I am sure that you have already idea about this three-dimensional three image. Could you please tell us a little bit, how do you see the future 3D image? 3D image, imaging? Yes. Uh, for NIR imaging at the moment, I do not know, sorry, but yeah, for IR and Raman, we already have the uh, 3D uh, imaging. I think uh, uh, actually I ourselves uh, published one paper regarding the 3D Raman imaging using polymer sample. And we know the, uh, uh, I know there are some uh, good example uh, for IR, 3D IR imaging, okay? Uh, for example, uh, in Kobe University, Professor Harumi Sato uh, mm -hmm. uh, recently obtained a nice example of 3D, uh, 3D uh, IR imaging of polymer samples. So for IR and Raman, definitely 3D uh, imaging techniques are developing and uh, I think commercially av available. But for uh, NIR imaging, mm, I'm very sorry, but at the moment, I don't know. Maybe uh, somebody among the audience <laughs> knows, <laughs> I think. Mm. Um, Maybe uh, I, I, I just want to ask audience if you know the good results of 3D uh, uh, NIR imaging. One uh, a little question about, uh, I was um, thinking about the path length. Um, with infrared, uh, light doesn't go very much into the, the sample. And more or less it is, um, it is known, uh, but it, with infrared, depending on the molecules, mm -hmm. we have, we have um, uh, scatter and we mm -hmm. have transmittance and absorbance. It's very difficult yes, yes, yes. to calculate yes. the real path length. Mm -hmm. How, how, how do you solve this problem with the path length? Hmm. <laughs> it's very, very difficult question. You gave me a very difficult question. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, we, we have to uh, consider together, you see? Mm. Yep. This is a very important point. Mm. Um, yeah. But uh, two-dimensional is really, are, really uh, challenging, yes. 
But I think the uh, uh, incoming uh, NIR 2023 20, 20, at Innsbruck, maybe uh, uh, we can have a big discussion about the uh, 3D uh, NIR image. In there. Hmm. Maybe somebody will uh, show good result, I hope. Do you plan to go deeper into into the water spectrum? I mean, in, in the uh, the cell wall spectrum, because they're quite um, interesting water species there. But they, we need um, um, more data to identify them. Yeah, um, I have uh, uh, some data uh, of water. Uh, you mean the uh, water distribution in cell? I mean, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, here, yes, yeah, yes. Uh, this is the uh, image, okay, uh, obtained by uh, this one. This is the, uh, you know, a combination of uh, uh, anti symmetric OH stretching plus OH bending mode. So I use, uh, we use the, uh, this one to obtain the, uh, uh, this uh, distribution, okay? So uh, there is uh, some difference in uh, water distribution, maybe strongly hydrogen bond in water or with yes. hydrogen mm -hmm. bond in water. So some difference in, uh, in uh, hydrogen bonding or water uh, network. Yes. But it's very difficult, not easy to analyze uh, in more detail. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. So Thank you, Professor Tenko. So we have a, a few actually uh, questions and comments coming from Pierre Madel. Pierre, uh, can you actually unmute your phone and ask the yes, questions yes. directly, please? That would be nice. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes, perfect. Very wonderful, wonderful data, Professor Zaki. This is striking. And Thank I will you. just come up with a couple of questions, if I'm allowed. Maybe allow me first to ask one, and then maybe we can see if there's time to ask the others. Um, it regards particularly slide 13. Can you pop up again slide 13, please? 13? Yeah, 13, one, three. One, three. Um, this one? Yes. No, this next one. one. Yes, this one. And if you look at image A, at the very, let's say, from the position nine o'clock to 11 o'clock, there is a, a kind of wiry mesh like structure. And I'm wondering if that wiry mesh like structure next to the oil droplets is an indication of the primo vascular system. Can you, but if you move your pointer a little bit to the left, yes. Okay. Yeah, the, the, the mesh-like structure next to the oil droplets in figure and image A. You mean the first, this one, yes. Mm -hmm. This looks very much like the primovascular system. And, and this is a key issue in morphogenetics in the, in the term that the primovascular system somehow organizes it. It's just the kind of first circulatory system somehow organizes with the help of water, the arrangement of the cells, where then the future organism it expresses its phenotypic features. So I wonder if there is the possibility to look deeper into this particular concept of primal vascular systems using your 2D imaging tools. Oh, yes, yes. I, yeah, yeah, very good. Uh, thank you very much. Uh... Uh, very good uh, question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe uh, we should uh, uh, try to investigate in more detail, carefully. Mm -hmm. Yes. Maybe we should compare uh, this part and this part. Or this yes, part. exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then see yeah. if there's a kind of arrangement of the yes, structure, yes, the biomolecules, yes, 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 according yes. to the PVS yeah, yeah, yeah. This bias, is, let's say. Yes, very important part, uh, maybe, okay? And significant difference between this and this. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the second point that's associated with the PVS is 
the associated water structure, because I assume that the PVS is the result of the underlying, let's say, quantum electrodynamic properties of water in the, in the terms that you have a cycloton resonance frequencies of certain ionic species or other species that they have a charge. So that means that in this case, water guides the primal vascular system to form and establish the network. So, and as an underlying, an underlying driving principle, uh, the water, so we, 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 which slide? The, 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 the it's, I'm, I'm, <laughs> okay, I'm coming from the quantum electrodynamic perspective and, and using the cycloton resonance frequency properties of certain mm -hmm. ionic species that resonate in the water bath. Oh. And this water bath resonance property somehow guides the lining of the PVS mesh-like structure. And as mm. a third part, then come the cells, the actual cells that are established in this particular position with the typical, let's say, phenotypic characteristics. So we have a three-level hierarch hierarchical structuring, starting from the cycloton resonance properties of certain species, guided by the water, ma water matrix, underlying water matrix, that forms mm -hmm. the PVS as a second level hier hierarchical structure. And then mm -hmm. at the third level hierarchical structure, it comes the morphological, let's say the morphogenetic expression of mm -hmm. the cellular structures that form the embryo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know this is, this is dense. This is quite dense now. Yeah, I'm very, very sorry, but I'm not familiar with cyclotron uh, resonance. Yes, I know it's, it's a very tiny aspect of, mm. of physics. And, and yes, 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 yes. We're but, getting, um, but uh, allow me to put it like this. Let's leave it like this. We mentioned it, and maybe we can drive on these aspects in the future. So uh, if you could send your comments uh, by email, I'll, I would uh, very much yep, appreciate it. No problem. It. Okay. I will do that. Maybe, yep. maybe yeah, you can send uh, uh, email to Professor Chenkova, and maybe yep. Professor Chenkova will tra tra uh, transform it to me. Okay. Yes. Yes. Perfect. I will do that. Professor uh, Chenkova, it's okay. Yes, of course, yes, Professor. Of course. Yeah. Yes, we will connect uh, you to your comments. Are okay. Really interesting, but uh, please. Uh, uh, I just want to uh, run more from your comments, okay? Uh, it, 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 okay. it is, a, uh, I, I think it's the start of, of a very interesting uh, discussion mm -hmm. and um, uh, stimulating, I think, for the for, for future. Very good point, yes. Okay, okay. Then, then since this is already quite extensive, I stop here. The other questions are put in the chat, so it's not that relevant. Mm -hmm. But I will post your email to, to Romiana and then get this, this discussion going. Thank you very much. Thank you mm -hmm. very, very much. Thank, Thank you. you, Pierre, Thank for, you. for this question. So, Professor Rozaki, we had one comment from um, Professor Zoltan Kovac from Hungary, mm -hmm. who says he's uh, very grateful for the very informative presentations and says congratulations for these excellent results. Okay. He's hoping uh, to see all <laughs> in person in, in Eastbrook. Unfortunately, he had to leave for the meeting, mm -hmm. for some meeting. Uh, so now after Pierre, um, uh, do we have more questions from the audience? You can raise hand, you can type in the chat, chat box. Is there anyone actually here who uh, already is using uh, NIR imaging? Not really. Yeah, well, that, that is uh, quite a problem, I think, in aquaphotonics community that we do not do enough NIR imaging. There were people in the past who were working with uh, near infrared imaging, and this is something that I would like to stimulate in future. Mm. Um, I think uh, in, um, Dublin uh, group, uh, IFA, IFA group yes, is yes. working on imaging and aquaphotonics. And uh, I really expect them to um, go into deeper into the water out of this imaging because it's uh, so informative, especially. Yeah, but I, I like this work because it's about cells. And, and this is something that the, the scientific society is really looking for to understand what is the st structure of, of the water in, in the cell wall. Very important in the cell itself, of course. So I saw that there was a slide. Unfortunately, I didn't um, slide with the graphs. 
it's about 20, maybe. Professor Zaki, can we see the slide number 20? 20? Yes, please. Aha, uh -huh, okay, I get it, Lawrence. I think. Yep, no, no, this one. Sorry, this one. Yes, exactly. This one? No, 20, 20. Yes, 20. 20, this one. Yes. This, uh, here, I, I can see this uh, with the green, the membrane spectrum. And in the membrane spectrum, um, 1450 is so-called bulk water. And 14, it's zero. Huh? Yes. Um, the green line. Uh, uh, green line, okay. Yes, this is the, the, the spectrum of the membrane. Mm -hmm. um, and the zero, or second derivative, is the, the, the so-called bulk water, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. So, and then 1507, uh, this is um, structured water. Mm -hmm. So this is what we expected, actually. And then we have a very interesting 1615. Yes, yeah, this is around. new band. We didn't we didn't see that before. Yeah, so 1615. Uh, 1615. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and around. And mm -hmm. um, it probably starts from, from 1570. These are actually water water structures that are very, very interesting. And, and this it is worth going deeply and understanding. What exactly it is, but it, oh. and then if uh, maybe you have more expanded expanded spectrum towards um, like less than fourteen hundred. Okay, mm. and that would be even more interesting. Okay, yeah, your comment is uh, very uh, uh, variable. I think uh, we will we'll investigate more about the uh, uh, membrane spectrum. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. A very, very nice comments. Mm. Um, thank you, Professor Zengpa, for uh, again, one more comment. I think I saw in the audience uh, that Lian Lee maybe wanted to, to share something. <coughs> Lian, are you here? Lian? Okay, maybe I was wrong. <laughs> here. Uh, here. Uh, hello, Lian. Hi. Hi, I think you wanted to, to ask, right? Something? Uh, sorry, uh, I, I'm, I'm saying this is very interesting. Uh -huh. and, uh, and now we are trying to do some uh, AR imaging program. Uh, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I missed the, the, this section. Mm -hmm. uh, Yes, I know that you are working. You are working a lot with protein structure, and I think yeah. I, in the past saw uh, the papers that you worked on or regarding the dissolution of tablets, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 I was also interested in the beginning of the of the of the Professor Ozaki's presentation. He presented results about um, so from a paper of uh, uh, Dr. Ishikawa and, and others. Uh, that the process of dissolution of tablets was monitored uh, by using two bands, 1361 and 1354 nanometer band. And uh, yes, from this. So I was interested, I mean, uh, what is, how are these two bands selected? They're obviously important for, the, for this process of how the, the, uh, the dissolution happens. But can you maybe, um, Professor Ozaki, tell us about how how these bands are selected for the display? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm very sorry, but uh, I can't remember why we use, mm -hmm. we use these two bands. Maybe we have to read the uh, paper. Sorry, I, I just forgot. Mm. No problem. That is my job. I will read the paper. I just thought mm -hmm. to ask. Mm -hmm. yeah. Leon, any other comment, maybe? No? Yeah. Oh, no. No. <laughs> okay. Elena, regarding 1361, we, we know that this is related, this band is related to solvation. solvation. Yes, yes, but this is 1354 is something that we see recently a lot, and it seems to be the distinctive. Uh, it's a protonated water. Yes, so I was... Uh, yeah, water, definitely water. Mm -hmm. It's a protonated water, yes. 
and it seems, I mean, uh, this is the, the developed by the ratio of these bands. So, so there is something um, <laughs> between these bands, which is very informative. Ah, okay, one other question again from P Pierre. Uh, slide 20. Oh, uh, slide 20. Uh, with 14, hmm? 15 nanometers uh, being bulk motor. Something is wrong. Ah, you lost the, you, you lost the, the sh screen sharing. Mm -hmm. ah, okay. Okay. Thank you. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. So if you can go, please back to again slide twenty. Uh, Pierre has another question about about this. Pierre, could you could you give a little yeah. bit more about the question? So I, I, I yeah. can't get. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, can you pop up uh, slide twenty again, please? Danny. Yeah, tw two zero twenty. Two zero. Wait, wait. Something is wrong. I got stuck. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. the, the question we, we we were talking previously about the bulk water, and I'm wondering if in this scan is it possible to identify also associated bonded water or interfacial water, and even maybe coherent fraction. Mm -hmm. Of water, this one, yeah, this one exactly. The top, at uh, the bottom uh, left graph, where you look bottom at the green left. line. Yeah, yes, uh, you yeah. mean this one? Yes, uh, the the green trend here mm -hmm. shows various sp sp spikes, and I wonder if one of these spikes, and maybe Jelena or Romiana can help me in that, uh, are associated to a more coherent like fraction. I don't think I'm so. <clears throat> I don't think so. But uh, what professor is showing here is uh, something. Uh, th this this method uh, now in this case uh, uh, the results are uh, about the cell, but this is the perfect uh, imaging method to, for example, uh, take the spectra of nafion as it is hydrated. So you, you would know exactly you know, uh, micrometer by micrometer, how we have the distribution of water species. So we would understand which bands are uh, related to this coherent fraction that you're talking about. So this is beautiful. Uh, I think that this method can actually resolve the questions about coherence that, mm -hmm. that we are all constantly asking. <laughs> I also liked what the professor was showing. Uh, not only about, for example, on macro scale on Afion, like, I mean, the cell is quite big. Also, uh, uh, with nanoparticles. And Professor Ozaki said in one, in one slide that this is a beautiful method for, for, the, um, uh, for the imaging of uh, these nanostructures and how, how they function. So I think that would be also beautiful to see. I wish I can have this uh, composition, actually. <laughs> Professor um, Ozaki, is, uh, is this uh, NAR camera available? Mm -hmm. uh, Compovision, is this uh, instrument, is this camera available? Yeah, still available, but uh, this uh, uh, camera was originally uh, uh, developed by uh, Sumitomo uh, uh, Electronic uh, Company, Sumitomo Denko in Japanese. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, he, they developed very, very nice camera, but uh, mm. uh, business, <laughs> frankly speaking, business was uh, not good. Oh. So uh, uh, Sumitomo uh, Electric Company sold, sold their system to uh, another small company. Now a uh, small company deals with this instrument. So you can, maybe you can get contact, uh, but, uh, Mm, I don't know recent uh, situation. This is a really excellent system, but not many people bought. Unfortunately, yes, I, I, I would love to, but probably the price is really high. Yes, but, I think but so. Mm. Such beautiful resolution. These these images are just amazing. The quality, yeah, the yeah, 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 amazing. <laughs> Yes. But Ishigaki-san, maybe she has still that, that camera. Hmm? Ishigaki-san, maybe she has this imaging system. No, 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 no. She has, uh, uh, her imaging system is a parking Elma system, rather old one. Ah, mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm. um, Coming back, Yelena, to Pierre's mm -hmm. question. 
Mm -hmm. um, Pierre, can you hear me? <coughs> I can hear you. I can hear you. Yes. Yeah. Um, I was talking about this. Uh, um, you see, 1450, this is the second derivative spectra, the green one. And yeah. 1450 is around zero. So um, next to 1450 is 1441, mm -hmm. which is non coherent zone from 1444. So, which means that most of the bands are coherent. But yep. this is when talking about what? So now we have to, if we have this data, we can analyze in terms of coherence or any other experiment, further experiment has to be done in a way to check the coherence. But this is a very good question and, and this should be done because this is what we want to know. We want to know if we have coherence in the cell wall and, and uh, yeah. if we don't, very because important. Sure. May, 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 may I add a little uh, idea that came that have just popped into my mind is that when when you look at the coherent we, the coherence aspect we don't look at 100% coherence we look at the uh, relationship between let's say 40% and uh, coherent and 60% non coherent fraction as Carbelli pointed out in his PhD thesis and it's just a repetitive of that what uh, Giuliano Preparata back then calculated in 1995 so it 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 would help us to understand this gel-like structure in terms of shifting from a more coherent pattern to a more incoherent pattern to allow the biochemistry to take place. Because it becomes fully coherent, then we get stuck and the morphogenesis doesn't take place anymore and the embryo wouldn't form. So we have to this kind of, we have to deal with this kind of fluid-like coordinated directive development process. And for that, we need the bands who show us a little bit of coherence, the bulk water fraction, and maybe the interfacial free region and the facial fraction. So we need all this information extracted from this, let's say, green trend that we see in this particular graph. But, but, well, that's why the infrared imaging is so good because it is non-invasive yeah. and we can get dynamic spectra over the time yeah. in, in, in very, very short pulses. Yeah. The problem here, unfortunately, is the light. Because like I said, um, I, I saw the light. Is it a very strong light that might evaporate the, the water from the sample very fast? Mm -hmm. Or for how long can mm -hmm. we monitor a spectra of uh, the, the spec, spectra of, of such system? You mean for time, for time? Uh, uh, because light is very strong, right? Yeah, okay. so you know, the heating. we can measure uh, imaging only a few seconds. Uh -huh. Well, but still, in a few seconds, if, if we see spectrum millisecond, millisec, let's say 20 uh -huh. integration time 20, 20 millisec, then we will see lots of spectra. And, and then, then we can see the, what, what Pierre is talking about the, the change of uh, coherent to non coherent uh, uh, ratio. In, in the cell wall. Mm. Yep. So, yeah. If, um, if you have the spectra um, consecutively taken, mm -hmm. um, second, maybe we can, we can, I don't know, look at this. Well, but the, the, the interesting feature would be if, if, if this is possible to identify, then we could do as a kind of a deconvolution as Antonella De Nino did in her paper back then, a couple of years ago, which allows us to see the non-coherent fraction and the coherent fraction as they change while mm. the morphogenetic features change. Uh, actually, I have, to, I have to just comment here. What Professor Ozaki in the beginning of the, of the presentation was mentioning about the new methods, the method uh, about the correlation actually, um, 2D band shift correlation spectroscopy would be perfect for what you're saying. Correlation yes, to the yes, correlation yes. spectroscopy. It's just amazing methods. Unfortunately, we are not very, um, we, we do not use that method also with aquaphotomics very much, but I still hope that I will, you know, I Somebody incorporate will. that Somebody as a, will. <laughs> yes, yes. As a sure. part of a regular practice, this is such a strong, strong uh, data analysis uh, methods. To, to understand how the you know like um, events are happening over time, what comes first, what comes second uh, as an event, which band changed first, and so on. 
So this was beautiful, I think. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, so it was like say we, we had the seminar. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Elena is point, pointing at very, very interesting um, mm -hmm. discovery of our seminar because mm -hmm. we realized how good will be two dimensional spectroscopy mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. um, investigating coherence in water. Oh, perfect method. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Method. I see, I see. But, mm -hmm. uh, well, <laughs> yeah, for the future. Yes. So okay. Many things. Um, do we have more questions from the audience? Anyone else? Come on, guys. Few more chances. <laughs> As usual, we, we, we again extended a little bit more than like one hour plan, but this is something like a regular. Any comments or questions? Well then, I guess uh, this is it for now. I would like to thank to Pro Professor Ozaki once again. Thank you very much for accepting to give us this webinar. And I'm really hoping and we're striving to incorporate all this into the parts of our of the things that we are working in ecophotomics. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And this uh, is definitely for giving tips. me a wonderful mm -hmm. opportunity of talking about our recent studies on NI imaging. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate well, with this, then I hope I really mean uh, that, that this is not uh, the last time that we hear, uh, you know, that we have a seminar on NIR uh, imaging. And we actually plan to have um, webinars in September that are a little bit related. I mean, they're still in the NIR imaging uh, section, but uh, when it comes to the imagining of the parts in the brain. So we will go back to this topic uh, again. And in the meantime, I hope that we will um, progress more <laughs> based on what Professor Ozaki was telling us today. And uh, so this is it from, from We're me We're looking forward today. to welcome Antonella mm -hmm. next. For the next webinar, it will be in one month from Professor Antonella De Nino. Uh, the webinar is, today's webinar is of course recorded and it will be published in a few days uh, on YouTube channel. Uh, there is also opportunity afterwards, after you listen uh, on YouTube, you can leave comments there or questions from pro for Professor Ozaki and we will forward the questions uh, to, to Professor Ozaki when he has time to answer and then we will upload them also on YouTube. Um, any questions for, from anyone or comments for the, for the end of the webinars today? Well then, thank you all for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you once again. For thank you. Thank you very much. It was a thank real you. pleasure Appreciate and honor. It. Thank you. Well, I guess see you then all in one month. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ito-san. Thank you, Tanya. san Tani-sensei. Ah. Thank you so much, Krzysztof and Justina, for attending today. It was lovely to see you. Takio Ji-sensei, thank you so much for attending. <laughs>